So I recently took my first transatlantic cruise. From wild storms at sea to visiting destinations I never thought I would in my lifetime, more people being on board than I expected, and broken elevators, this would definitely be a cruise vacation unlike any other. If I had to sum this cruise up into three words, I would say eventful, exciting, and unexpected. However, in this video, we are diving deep into the details, like a submarine going into the mirror in a trench so buckle up ladies and gentlemen so I decided to embark on this transatlantic quest for two reasons one I had never been on a transatlantic cruise before and as a cruise commentator it only made sense that I went so with the help of my travel agent sponsored touring plans by the way if you want to book an amazing vacation with touring plans the link will be in the description box below they were able to make it happen and two it was just good for business you see this was a brand new cruise ship that I would be sailing on and I had to be out all of my other competition by being the first person on that ship to create content for all of you beautiful people to see. My transatlantic cruise will be a 14 day sailing taking place between November 6th and 20th of 2022 on what was at the time the world's newest cruise ship the Carnival Celebration. This would also be the largest cruise ship ever in Carnival's fleet as well as the first ever cruise with passengers on board. This vessel was built in 2022 cost 1 billion dollars to build, holds just shy of 5,400 passengers, 2,000 crew, has 19 decks, and happens to be the sister ship of my favorite cruise ship of all time, the Carnival Mardi Gras. It is more or less the same ship with a couple changes I'll explain in the video, and it does have the Premier Ride Bolt, the first ever roller coaster at sea. My cruise would start in Southampton, UK, just outside of London. It would have four stops over in Europe before finishing in Miami after its transatlantic crossing. The cost of the cruise would be just under $4,300 for myself and my girlfriend Lauren to sell. That would include the port taxes and fees, insurance, as well as the gratuity or tips. And the room that I would be staying in would be a bottom level cove balcony. On embarkation day or boarding day, aka the first day of the cruise, my girlfriend Lauren and I would arrive at the port over in Southampton. And I gotta admit, the boarding process overall was just a little confusing, slow. This was in part due to a ship inspection that took a little longer than expected. And also something I didn't expect, there were over 5,000 people boarding, which I didn't think would be a thing for a transatlantic sailing in the middle of fall. Once I did arrive on board the Carnival Celebration, things did start to feel like more of a traditional cruise experience, except a little bit more chaotic and hectic. Partly due to the fact that it's a brand new ship, the staff still has to kind of work out their kinks and get a system in place, and we were also in the UK with primarily Americans on board. Once I arrived, I did the mustard drill, things went smooth there, then we went over to the buffet. I gotta say overall I was a little disappointed at first glance because only a portion of the buffet area was open for a ship that was almost at full capacity. There wasn't a lot of options. Once we arrived to our room as well, I did enjoy the room. I thought it was beautiful. However, for a cove balcony, I did think things were a little tight in that room and that ship in particular as opposed to her sister, the Carnival Mardi Gras, she does hold more people and I would say about three inches or six inches or so were taken out of every room in order to allot for more spacing aka more cabins on board the ship. To me that was pretty obvious. Once things started to somewhat simmer down, I did take a gander of the ship. It was a beautiful ship, that much is certain. However, the age and the fact that the ship was new did start to show immediately. There were creaks once we started sailing because the ship had to break in. There were sinks in the staterooms not working, some of the toilets were not working, some of the elevators were not working, which will become a recurring thing. But you do have to be mindful of the fact that whenever you sail on a brand new new ship, it is expected that some things as far as kinks and as far as the tech on board and all of the little giblets may or may not be working properly. Just to understand that whenever you go on a brand new ship, you are essentially a guinea pig, respectfully. Unfortunately for the first couple days, the weather wasn't exactly ideal. In true UK fashion, it was cold and wet during our first days on board the Carnival Celebration. We got storms at sea right out of the gate and the ship was rocking baby I gotta tell you overall for me I do love that kind of weather it's something weird I like a dark gloomy rainy stormy weather it just puts me in such a good mood a state of peace and contentment however for my girlfriend Lauren she didn't exactly fare as well as she got seasick 
The storms were an ultimate test for my girl Lauren to finally get her sea legs, but after about two days, the storms did clear up and it gave us an opportunity to get a real look and assessment of the ship. Like I said, this is the sister ship of the Carnival Mardi Gras that came out last year. It was actually my first cruise ever as a passenger. It did have some sentimental value, still does to this day, and more or less, the ship was exactly the same, like I said at the beginning of the video, with the exception of a couple things. Yes, it does have the bold roller coaster. They did take out the face famous fortune teller bar on the Carnival Mardi Gras, replaced it with Latitudes. There is more seating and they also have a Miami themed area known as 820 Biscayne. Very cool looking area. The demographic on board was primarily an older crowd, mostly loyalty members with Carnival, Platinum and Diamond members, about the average age of your cruiser, between 45 and 50 years old. A seasoned crowd, there was a lot of salt and pepper in the mix, I could tell you that. Now I would say it's primarily due to the fact that for this 14 day transatlantic sailing school was still in so a lot of parents weren't taking their kids out for a two-week sailing across the world also thanksgiving break was right around the corner so to bring them out early was just kind of out of the question however lauren and i we were able to find a couple young bucks out there to keep the party going so we made it work by the way, being on this ship for two weeks did provide a unique opportunity for me to check out a decent amount of the staterooms and suites on board. I do have a review of my room, the extended balcony, the regular suite, as well as the Havana suite. The link to all of those videos will be up here above. I will say when it comes to the regular suite on board, I did notice a small or big, depending on how you see it, designed flaw. You see, they have a larger extended balcony. However, with the design of the ship, it doesn't really give you a lot of of room of privacy since the extended balconies for the rooms the suites that is are kind of poked out and everybody on the regular balconies can see everything you're doing the food and dining options overall i would say was great as a whole i would say maybe between a seven or eight out of ten the main dining room was slow it took my girlfriend lauren and i about an hour and a half up to two hours in order to get our full course meal from start to finish but of course being the appetizer over to the dessert we did go to top and yaki one of the dining options for my birthday. I turned 30. I have officially crossed over the line. It's crazy to know that I probably won't finish this decade without some salt and pepper myself, but it is what it is. One thing I didn't like though, however, is the overall layout and plans for the buffet. I thought it was just on embarkation day that there will only be a portion of the buffet open, but this ended up being unfortunately a recurring theme on board the celebration. When you got there, there just wasn't a lot of options and it kind of seemed a little sketchy to me that the cruise line carnival was trying to essentially push a lot of people to go purchase a specialty dining option. There was, of course, your other options like Shacks and Guy's Burgers. However, that was only for lunch. After lunch was concluded, those places were closed and you were kind of forced to go pay for something else if you didn't want the long wait at the main dining room. Do keep in mind, I am somewhat speaking in more of a general sense because there were other free options like the deli where you can get all kinds of really delicious sandwiches, to be honest. And you also had a pizza spot known as the Miami Slice, but I would fit those areas as more of so like a grab and go and not more of a sit down and kind of eat and enjoy your time without actually paying oh and by the way one more thing i do have to say this is just my opinion well the opinion of many others that i interviewed as well as my girlfriend lauren the miami slice the pizza spot over in 820 biscayne is not the greatest by any means however it is the only spot available during the evening hours for you to grab a quick snack carnival used to have something known as pirate pizza i do think that pizza had more value it tastes better and well the quality was just better for me again that is just the personal opinion of a random guy on youtube with a silly hat and may or may not be wearing pants right now as i'm recording this video so you make that determination for yourself now let's dive into my favorite portion of the video the entertainment so as most of you know, I'm a former crew member. I've worked for touring companies like the Harlem Globetrotters. I've worked for Carnival. I've worked for Norwegian. I've worked for Virgin. And well, I've worked at theme parks and traveled all over the world doing all kinds of theater shows, Broadway shows, street shows, immersive shows, you name it. Now, I will talk about the good first. On Carnival, I am happy because one thing I do love on cruise ships is the comedians. If there are comedians on board, best believe I'm going to as many shows as I can. In every single port of call, every port stop, every island, it seemed like they all alternated a comedian like every two days there was a brand new comedian on board which personally for me I thought was extremely cool they also had a pianist I believe his name was Eden this guy was absolutely amazing now on the bad side of things they had something known as Grand Central this is like the main like large I guess
guess you can put it in the atrium category, not atrium, but you know what I mean, like a big area. This is where they hosted most of their production shows. Now, I want to say hindsight is maybe 2020. It seemed like a good idea. Carnival's idea was to kind of have like an immersive show in which everybody gets a little piece of each show. However, to me, it was more or less a train wreck. Just to be clear, the talent there was absolutely amazing. Some good friends of mine. I know the producers as well and some of the managers involved in the production shows. However, it just wasn't my taste. You can't get a good view of the show. And the fact that on this particular sailing, a lot of people were older too. They would go park and save a seat as early as noon for a show that started at 7 o'clock. Those people would sit there. And if you didn't get a good seat between the three decks, I believe it was 6, 7, and 8, if you didn't get the first two rolls, I want to say, then, well, you were kind of out of luck on that one. The show quality, I want to say, is like an upgraded MSC. If I had to label everything, I would say Royal Caribbean alternating between the two are the top tier premiere when it comes to mainstream cruise lines in their shows. And then it trickles down to Norwegian, which they put out great shows as well. A lot of Broadway musicals and stuff. And well, from there, you have... Mm, let's go with Virgin. I don't really like their shows. Carnival, and then we have MSC all the way down the bottom. Virgin beats out Carnival and MSC because I give them an A for effort for at least making an attempt to be a little different. However, those shows still are not that great to me. If I had to give a final remark on the entertainment, I would just say for Carnival, maybe put some of the shows in the theater because they had almost zero production shows inside of the theater. Make the theater larger. That way people have an option. Do they want an immersive show? in Grand Central or that they want to see a full-on production show where they can see the whole thing at the theater on board. As far as our four ports of call, we did Galavandu around Portugal and Spain, which I thought was absolutely amazing. We spent a ton of time, I would say the perfect amount of time from like sun up to sundown over in those ports. Plenty of time to get some stuff done, excursions if you want to just kind of free roam and do whatever it is that you want to do. I want to say the star of the ports of call for me would be Tenerife. I absolutely love that island. It's a Spanish island over there. And well, I hadn't been there in about five years. They got black sand beaches, absolutely gorgeous. I would say it is the equivalent to maybe like a European Hawaii except a lot cheaper because yes even though things are imported over there it's just a very cost effective area in which you can travel around and go to the beach go surfing do what you want for a less cost as far as price than you would over in Hawaii. Something random that without a doubt blew me away was the Wi-Fi. This may not apply to all of you because you maybe are on vacation you're not actually working so I'll make this one quick but the Wi-Fi I believe I paid it was like just under $400 for a 14-day cruise, so obviously not bad. This is for the premium, so surfing and streaming. Even during a transatlantic crossing from Europe over to the United States, by far, not only at sea, but best Wi-Fi I have ever had anywhere. I kid you not. I don't know if they installed Starlink secretly or what, but I was able to upload 30 minute YouTube videos within a matter of minutes. Most of you may not know how big of a deal that is, but that is some serious bandwidth if that's the correct term to use. I'm not very tech savvy, but the Wi-Fi was immaculate. Best I've ever seen. The nightlife on board for Transatlantic was actually pretty decent. My girl Lauren and I were able to find some younger people there and we had a great time, no doubt about it. The comedians were out, the pianist was out, they even had a nightclub over in the area. Weren't a lot of people, but we definitely made it work. One thing I will say is that there was a white party that they had up on the Serenity deck, that's the adult only area, that was an absolute fail. The speakers on a brand new ship, for some reason, it was not that great and I can speak from experience because I went on the ship twice, one when it was a windy day and one when it wasn't. The speakers were still crap and just the way it all went down, it was just an absolute fail. Carnival definitely needs to work on things in that category. Other than that, parties were good. My girlfriend Lauren and I, we had one experience where some lady basically tried to fight my girlfriend. I'll put the link to the video right up here if you want to check it out. But other than that, things were good. If I had to sum up my first transatlantic voyage, I would say that overall it was decent. Would I do it again? Maybe, but only for two reasons. One, the reason I went through in the first place was primarily to work, beat out my competition, and get the cruise ship tour done, all the content done on that ship as much as possible before the inaugural sailing in which it would be a media fest and everybody from all walks of life in the content creator and media space would be on board. That was my main purpose. I would also only do it if I were going from, let's say, the United States over to Europe and I had planned on just staying over in Europe and doing some work.
work or having a vacation over there. Other than that, I would say a transatlantic for me, two weeks is just a little bit too long to be on one ship. I have done back to back, multiple back to back sailings in which I'm on four different ships or two different ships for a span of two or three months. That I don't mind, but it's a lot of sea days. I want to say typically after the ports of call and you actually do the seven days or so at sea, the experience for me starts to kind of deteriorate and melt together. And usually by that time, yes, maybe the first one or two sea days, you can explore the entire ship. But regardless of how big it is, things do start to kind of get a little repetitive. When it comes to the carnival celebration overall, just like any ship, absolutely gorgeous, has her flaws but i will say i still prefer the carnival mardi gras why it's kind of hard to explain like i said it has some sentimental value but i do have a great time on both but between the more so cramped spacing on board the carnival celebration the lack of the fortune teller bar all that stuff it just kind of for me was just like look it's like they tried to kind of essentially one up the carnival mardi gras and they just didn't commit to it now i did take a regular cruise two weeks after my transatlantic to get a real feel of the carnival celebration after they had hopefully worked out all of the kinks it was a different experience so i will be putting up another review on that one in the coming days so be on the lookout for that review as well but if you guys have any thoughts on this please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always know that i appreciate every single one of you especially for watching this very long video you guys are the greatest make sure you hit that like button on your way out subscribe check out touring plans and just know i have more content coming once again thank you for watching and i'll see all of you later take it easy